In today's episode, we're gonna talk about the Rode Procaster. What's up, fam? Welcome back to Leveling Up with CMH. I'm your host, CMH. Uh, don't forget to check out our flagship program, Startup U. We help people turn ideas into revenue generating business endeavors. Startup U. Check out that below in the description. Before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a, hit the bell for notification and leave a comment below. Okay, so the Rode Procaster. So I have not used this microphone. I will say I've used several other Rode products, but this one I have not used. We'll also be able to give you a sound comparison because I'm on the Shure SM7B, which is my microphone I've been using for some time, the infamous Shure SM7B. Uh, you can check that out. I've got a video I've done previously to kind of go over the specifics of this microphone. If you're in the market, I've done a lot of these videos. So if you check out our podcast playlist, you'll be able to check out all of the equipment that we've reviewed in addition to my tips and advice on podcasting. So uh, we are going to dive into this. So the first impression of this microphone is it's pretty heavy. I mean, it is a pretty bulky microphone. One thing that you'll notice with Rode microphones is um, they, so this microphone, I could talk into any direction, right? I could talk on this side, this side, all, all the way around, and it will pick up like pretty solid audio. Um, this with Rode products, one thing you'll notice is they put this little silver dot in the front of the microphone. And the reason being is because they want you to know this is the front. All right. So I have a, or I use a Rode NT for some time. And one of the things that I didn't realize at first was it looked very similar from the front and the back. I talked about that in the video where I talked about the Rode NT. And for a while, I almost sent it back to Rode because I was talking into the back of the microphone and I didn't realize it. It sounds like, oh my God, that's so stupid. How could you do that? But if you notice these microphones, they look, I mean, they're pretty congruent front and back. Uh, so that's pretty much what they're telling you there. Now, just a heads up, this is an XLR only microphone, meaning you have to have an XLR um, cable to use this and you have to have some kind of XLR port on whatever recording device you're using. So you could use, I have the Rode um, the Rodecaster Pro. This is going to drive me crazy, guys. The Rode Procaster and the Rodecaster Pro. I'm telling you, it's, this is going to be a tough video for me to get through. So the Rodecaster Pro is a sound deck. I've talked about it a lot before. It's a, it's a tremendous device. And the good thing is, is that this is a Rode product. This is a Rode mic arm, the PSA1, and I have a Rodecaster Pro. So if you got this stack, it's made to work together in uniformity. So I think you'd really be in, you really behoove yourself to have the stack of all Rode products. That's not to say that the Shure doesn't work well with the Rodecaster. The Rodecaster is made to work with any recording device. However, there is a preset already built in uh, where you can just put the, the Procaster in there and you just rock and roll. So you'll have to change some settings. It's not to say this is gonna be out of the box. However, it will be able to pick up that device and recognize it better than maybe some other devices where you're gonna have to put dynamic microphone and make a little bit added adjustments. Whereas the presets they've set in for their own devices they're obviously going to make it to work better with their own product, right? Uh, but the fact that it's an XLR microphone tells you one thing, that you're going to have to have some kind of device, whether it's a Rodecaster Pro or a digital, or a, a handheld one rather, uh, like the the Zoom H4n or the H6n. You're going to have to have something that that will uh, take in an XLR input, which is, which is this cord right here, right? So it's basically the difference between using this or using a traditional USB cord. There is no option for USB in this. The other thing you will notice, and this is very similar to what came with the Shure. I think this is, my guess is this is probably their competition to the Shure SM7B. I don't know that, but just I'm getting that vibe, right? Because what I got with the Shure SM7B is very similar to this. I didn't get the cables. I didn't get a, I didn't get a, a mic stand, nothing. You just get the microphone and then the adapter to be able to, to fasten it to whatever it is you want to fasten it to. So I'm going to fasten it to my Rode PSA1 because that's what it's made to do. And then what I'll be able to do is give you guys a quick sound comparison. This is a, a dynamic microphone, which means that it is made for voice content, specifically for podcasting, right? So if you put this in the middle of a conference room, it wouldn't work in the capacity that you want it to because it's not going to pick up 360 degree audio. It's made for voice content directly in front of it. The benefit of that, I talked about the, the, the cons, the benefit of it is, is that a lot of people really struggle with echo and reverb and whatever, wherever the recording location involves, or maybe they, they're recording at a home office and their neighbor's making a bunch of noise and the dog is barking and stuff like that. The benefit is, is that if you have something like a dynamic microphone, it's only going to pick up the sound that's directly in front of it. So we're going to see, and I want you to take note of not just the sound quality between this and, and, and the Rodecaster, or the Procaster, I told you I was going to mess that up. 
However, I also want you to notice, what does it sound like, the acoustics in the room? Are you picking up different noises around me outside of just my voice into the actual microphone itself? So keep that in mind. Be looking for that. I'm going to go ahead and switch these out so you can have a true sound comparison, and I'll see you guys in just a second. Okay, we are back, and you are now listening to the Roadcaster. Um well, I, it took me about a minute to switch this entire thing over. It, I'm not going to lie. It feels a little wonky the way I've got it set up with the PSA-1 with the mic arm. It d just doesn't feel natural, but it might just be the fact that I'm not used to the microphone being vertical like this in my face. Uh, it just feels a little awkward. Uh, however, I'm sure if you did your PSA-1 from the side and you turned this to the side, maybe it's just awkward that I feel like the, the mic arm is right in my face here. Um, but either way, and probably losing focus on my face and the camera too. Uh, the other thing that I noticed as I was hooking it up, so other than that, I just plugged straight in, but I did notice that this mic does require phantom power. Okay, so what does that mean? Basically, this microphone requires uh, another device that provides a power source to this. Now, here's the deal. The, the Rodecaster Pro, okay, Procaster, Rodecaster Pro, the Rodecaster Pro, the soundboard, has an advanced setting that you can quickly turn on phantom power. The way you'll know if you need phantom power or not is that you'll be talking and you won't see the decibels, you won't see anything happening, it'll just be dead, right? So you'll know, like, okay, it's probably going to need phantom power. Or you're not in the right channel, right? So one of the two things could be happening. Um, or you're not, you didn't turn it on the microphone on, which is also a possibility. But this mic does require phantom power on the Zoom H4n, the Zoom H6n, which are the other devices that I recommend that are more of the handheld ones that are recording devices. Uh, they also have that feature as well, where you can just go to the advanced settings and turn on phantom power. Uh, other than that, I don't know how it sounds. I've never used this microphone. I literally just turned down the level a little bit. I didn't mess with any of the advanced settings whatsoever. I have no idea with this microphone if I'm supposed to sit further back or I'm supposed to sit right up on it. I have no idea uh, with, the Zoo, with the Shure SM7B. I'm right up on it usually because that's what it's made to do. Um, and if I sit back, it doesn't pick it up, which is great because I, I don't hear any reverb at all with that microphone, right? So the further you have to sit away, the more likely it is that it is going to pick up things in the room, including your own echo. Um, so I have no idea. I could be blown out right now and you're hearing just a really <laughs> uh, not pleasant sound, you know, with the all the different noises coming through on your end. Um, so I will sit a little bit further back so you can hear that as well and see if it changes that at all. Um, overall, I mean, it is a seamless product as far as like there's all these adapters that I have to have for the Shure to work with a PSA-1, like this is an extension cord and this is the adapter for that. They're not expensive, but it is required for it to work with this specific road device. One of the benefits is, is that this already had all that, this mechanism is made to work with this. So it was just a quick and easy process to be able to connect it to the, the PSA-1. One thing you'll find with Rode products is Rode is great about having a lot of accessories that also go with their products, whereas some of the other microphone brands, they don't necessarily have that. So Rode is a awesome, awesome option when it comes to that. And also, too, something else you'll notice that I think is going to be really beneficial, and I really enjoyed this when I had the Rode NT, is that it comes with this little pouch. Because what you'll find, and I really saw this with the Rode NT, is that it got scratches on it, like really bad. And so, you know, no matter what, you're going to get scratches, specifically if you have this very beautiful black, you know, kind of a, it's like a, like a matte black color that they did on this, but it is, it is metal, right? So it will show scratches and um, when you have this, it will protect it to a large degree. So this is great for travel purposes. Uh, there's, I don't think there's going to be enough room, if I'm being totally candid, for you to put your XLR cable in here with it, unless you had a really short XLR cable where there wasn't a lot of slack. Maybe you could fit it in there. But either way, at least your microphone itself will be protected. You'll just have to have your XLR cable inside of your bag, whatever it is, whether bag you're carrying. Uh, but this will really, really protect it. Uh, and if you get something like the Zoom H4n or the H6n, you're ready to rock and roll. You just carry that with you. You're probably going to need a power source for that because I've noticed it just literally, I've never had a device that sucks the batteries more than the Zoom devices. I'm dead serious. I can put them in and be dead in like two hours, not kidding you. And it's like six batteries or something crazy. So anyways, off topic. Um, this is a great option. Rode makes a tremendous product. And I would say, and I'm curious to hear if you guys feel the same way, let me know in the comments below. If you feel like there's a good sound comparison between this microphone and my infamous Shure SM7B, because this one is considered the holy grail of podcast recording, uh, the Shure SM7B is. So I'm curious to hear what you think. Uh, this was supposed to be really, really high price. The other one that I'm going to do a review for, so make sure you guys subscribe, I am going to do the Rode PodMic, which is one, one that's really, really popular. And I would say it's probably more of a comparison 
price point wise to the ATR2100 or more of an entry level microphone. I think it's like not sub 100, but around $100. Uh, this one I think is, is, well, I know this one's more expensive than that. So I think it's more of an advanced microphone like the, the, um, the Rode NT. There's also, uh, the, um, Oh my! My wife used to have it. I can't even think of the name of it. The, the I think it's the Pod Podcaster, the Rode Podcaster, the Rode Podcaster. Then there's the Rode Procaster, which I have no idea there's between a Procaster and a Podcaster is. But anyways, uh, there's a lot of different products that they offer, all various price point ranges. You cannot go wrong with any of them. So what I recommend you do is just do some sound sampling, right? Listen to your voice on it or look at videos like what I'm doing and hear a sound comparison of, okay, I love how the Procaster sounds. I love how the Podcaster sounds. I love how the Rode NT sounds. I love how the Pod mic sounds or I love how the Shure SM7B sounds. Whatever you end up doing, you can't go wrong. Keep in mind that if you do, if you want to stack equipment, if eventually you want to evolve into having a nice tech stack with your arm and your 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 sound deck, if whatever it is you want to do, um, this is a great, you can always build on top of Rode products, which is awesome, right? That they made it that way to be seamlessly integrated, and I think you can't go wrong in that sense. All right, guys, if you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications. Don't forget to check out my program, Start Up You. I'm the founder of Start Up You, where we help people turn their ideas into revenue generating businesses. Check that out more in the description below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.